Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for April 7th, 2022, recorded around 4.20 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the new Colorado State University hurricane season 2022 forecast and a look at some of the factors what will be likely playing into another busy hurricane season. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. Everything is pretty quiet across the area like we would expect for the beginning of April. Across the continuous uh, United States here, we have a very uh, big upper level system right now. Big upper level low and big uh, cyclone, mid-latitude cyclone here moving off towards the north and east. And we also have this area of disturbed weather all the way uh, from the North Carolina area of Virginia all the way down south here and some extension of that even into Florida with the potential potential for some severe weather across those two areas today. And we could even have some severe weather, a potential severe weather outbreak towards next week across the plains and uh, we'll talk about that here coming up in just a little bit. So sea, sur sea surface temperature anomalies as of yesterday, April 6th, again, we kind of uh, took a look at this last week and much of the same story, uh, not really much has changed since last week. So this will kind of be a little bit more brief, uh, but we still have this La Nina pattern on going across the equatorial Pacific. Again, the Nina 3-4 region is below average and uh, is quite a bit below average around a uh, one to one half uh, degrees Celsius below the long-term average. So this is uh, firmly a La Nina pattern. The atmosphere is still behaving in a La Nina base state. So everything right now really points to the La Nina maintaining itself through the next while. And we could be talking about this La Nina uh, persisting even until the peak of the hurricane season this year. Uh, so we still have a long ways to go with that. Of course, things can and will change between now and then. Uh, but I just don't really see the onslaught of any El Nino, especially any significant El Nino, uh, to really hinder the hurricane season uh, this year around. And uh, again, we're still watching this warmth up towards South America here. Now, this is definitely interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, the main reason being, however, that this warmth, if it does manage to persist and maintain itself or strengthen at all, really, for that matter, it could cause a little bit of a disposition with the upward and downward moving air. Generally in a La Nina, all the downward moving air is over this area and all the upward moving air rising motion is over the tropical Atlantic. However, with this little bit of warmth, that could at least displace some of that and create enhanced vertical shear and subsidence in the tropical Atlantic and into the Caribbean. Uh, not a substantial amount so but certainly something that would be noticeable for any storms that are not well maintained crossing through this area um, subsidence issues and wind shear have been a, an issue plaguing the tropical atlantic over the last several years um, so it's nothing necessarily new uh, but this is definitely something to kind of keep an eye on it could be a player um, but it's not a super huge factor at the moment so not really taking a huge in-depth look at that, but it is something to kind of monitor. And this very cold pattern off of the coast here of California and the west coast of the United States and the Baja, uh, this is definitely one of those patterns that you see in a La Nina Bay state, this very cold PDO pattern. And uh, this will continue to persist over the next couple of months. And this definitely suggests that, again, we could be dealing with uh, a pretty busy hurricane season. This all kind of coincides with a La Nina base state. And so this is going to be one of the factors that's going to heavily contribute towards the uh, expected active hurricane season that we are likely to be approaching on very soon. Again, hurricane season as of this point uh, is only two months away because next month is May, then the month after that is June. So we are only two months away uh, from the hurricane season officially beginning and less than that until tropical weather outlooks begin and when we would start to expect to be watching uh, for these early season activity uh, bids to start occurring. Uh, in the tropical Atlantic, meanwhile, again, most of the tropical Atlantic is at or slightly above the long-term average. Again, 
most of this area in through the main development region is at average with the exception of the coast of Africa. Again, this water here is pretty easily mixed. It's not very deep. It is pretty shallow. Um, so this will continue to wax and wane as we go through the next several months here. And in the subtropical Atlantic, we continue to watch this very warm pool of water here. And it has waned a, a little bit, but some of these water temperatures, especially in the Gulf Stream, are about 5 Celsius above the long-term average. And while 5 Celsius, you think of it not being significant, in this case it is significant because this is uh, talking about a climatological average over the past 30 or so years. And so when you start to see this uh, well above average that uh, contributes to a lot more uh, heat potential, uh, a lot more uh, energy that is stored in the water, and that definitely, um, you know, we could go on about thermodynamics and, and everything like that, but in short, that definitely is going to have a very substantial role in the upcoming hurricane season, mainly for two reasons. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So looking at the grand scheme, this is the 1981 to 2010 climo for the sea surface temperature anomalies. Again, very clear indication that we are in that La Nina. Again, water temperatures in the equatorial Pacific are well below the long-term average. And meanwhile, in the tropical Atlantic, we continue to see that the sea surface temperature anomalies here are just a bit warmer or right at where they should be for this time of the year. But this uh, warm blob up here that is off the coast of, um, you know, the Canadian Maritimes and up there in the subtropical uh, high Atlantic there, this is going to be determinant on two things. First of all, this determines stability in the tropical uh, Atlantic in the main development region more specifically. And also this creates a stronger ridge of high pressure out in this region. The Bermuda Azores High would be stronger uh, if the subtropical warmth were to continue. And again, this also would suggest that storms, uh, any storms that do try to form in the main development region, again, generally for the most part would get shoved further westward. It's not to say every storm is going to be a land threat, but that's to say that there's a greater probability of a land threat. And that was reflected in the um, the update today from Colorado State University with a 71% chance of a major hurricane hitting uh, the United States East Coast and that is a pretty high risk there. So speaking of this outlook that we keep talking about, this is the outlook uh, released today. The Colorado State forecast goes for 19 named storms, 9 hurricanes, 4 major hurricanes, and the accumulated cyclone energy ACE index at 160. This 160 is a little concerning. Uh, this would go to suggest a near hyperactive hurricane season. And I don't necessarily agree uh, that 160 is, is where we could be. I think we could be a little bit lower than that. And this is certainly one of the more aggressive hurricane outlooks that we've seen from Colorado State University in the last several years beating out even 2017, which was a historically active in terms of major hurricanes and United States impacts, and uh, even comes to rival uh, 2020 in terms of the ACE index. I think this might be slightly higher or just slightly below 2020. Either way, this is a very, uh, very big first guess from Colorado State. And keep in mind, this will change. This isn't exactly what's going to happen, uh, but this is a prediction. And we're getting better at these longer range predictions. And the reason why is because we have more of this stuff available. This is the sea surface temperature anomalies, again, stuff we already kind of covered, but this is a little bit more higher resolution data here. And we can see again, mainly tropical uh, Atlantic right at, or just slightly cooler and very warm subtropical Atlantic. And that kind of correlates uh, semi sort of well. Uh, we have some correlation here in the subtropical warmth, but we do have a lot more in the way of warmth out here in the tropical Atlantic in the main development region that we don't have. So this isn't really the best correlating factor, but there is some correlation. And again, uh, April sea surface temperatures don't really correlate well with activity in the hurricane season. 
that mainly is May and June where we start to really kind of feel those correlating effects in those sea surface temperatures. So we're still about a month or two away from really kind of nailing that in the coffin, so to speak. However, this is the North American Multimodel Ensemble forecast here. So this is uh, most of the North American models. It's a multimodel ensemble uh, with a bunch of different uh, numerical weather prediction models in, in here and uh, in climate models, etc. So what this is looking at is the sea surface temperature anomaly map for August, September, and October. Really your peak months during the hurricane season, August, September, October. And what this is continuing to show is that we persist with this La Nina pattern over here, very persistent uh, La Nina pattern. And again, some tropical main development region warmth. However, again, notice this really big subtropical warmth way out here. This subtropical warmth is important because again, it is going to have impacts in terms of how things are going to play out in the main development region and especially with regards to instability and the Bermuda Azores high. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind here again is warmth that is concentrated like this seems to be in the subtropical Atlantic uh, would seem to suggest that we have some stability problems in the main development region, which prevents and, and hampers tropical cyclone formation in the MDR. Now, that is good and that is bad. That is good because that may limit the amount of tropical cyclones that end up actually forming, but it's also bad because these tropical waves that don't develop in the MDR don't get pulled northward and instead they move their way and march their way westward into the Caribbean and guess where the majority of people live yeah over in here and that's where those tropical waves end up going and so if they don't develop out here guess where they do develop they develop out here in most cases and we've seen it in 2020 in as recent as last year, we saw that with Ida and just with a bunch of storms, even Laura back in 2020, uh, you know, and, and whatnot. I mean, there's a plethora of examples of this. So it's not the end all be all and it does increase land risk, but maybe reduces the amount of tropical cyclones, at least in the MDR. Now, there's always the potential, of course, that we could be dealing with some high latitude storms again this year. That is seems to be kind of a a theme over the last several years we deal with this high latitude tropical cyclone spam basically where we just get storm after storm that comes from a mid-latitude cyclone so we'll see what kind of happens but the ace index of 160 that's borderlining if not on hyperactive uh, from colorado state the precipitation anomalies here uh, for august september and october off the same model here continue to suggest the potential for above normal um, rainfall here in the Sahara and also coming off of Africa here in the main development region with maybe a little bit drier down here in the Caribbean and certainly noticeably drier down here where the La Nina pattern is. So that could be something to watch and maybe some indications of high latitude here. Maybe you can kind of pick out some tropical cyclone tracks, something like that. Can't really tell obviously. But that could be something interesting as we go ahead into the peak of the hurricane season. And uh, over the last couple of days, we've had the uh, European um, model, the seasonal forecast for hurricane um, frequency across uh, the Western Pacific and the Eastern and Atlantic basins. So in the Atlantic basins, we notice that we are actually quite a bit above the standard deviation here. Again, the forecast mean is for 7.8 frequency and this is a 3.2 percent increase where the average climate mean is 6.9 and so again we have uh, 51 different ensembles and 70 uh, 725 climate size uh, and this is going from uh, the initial dates of 1993 all the way up to last year 20, 2021 so this is definitely definitely an above average uh, call for the uh, Atlantic. And uh, I think this one calls for a mean of about 17 named storms off of 
the ECMWF. So that definitely uh, goes to suggest that we could be dealing with another busy hurricane season this year. So transitioning out of the hurricane stuff now, we'll go quickly to the severe weather stuff. We got some severe weather potential today. There's a slight risk for severe storms across portions of far northeastern South Carolina and towards North Carolina and Virginia. Marginal risk surrounding that and a marginal risk including portions of Central and South Florida. Again, we already had some very nasty tornadoes up there near Allendale, South Carolina just a few days ago. Uh, we've had some very nasty storms all the way across the southeastern United States and even Florida. Uh, today, uh, we had a pretty uh, big wind uh, gust here in Orlando. We could see that we had a 45 mile per hour wind gust here. Some tree limbs came crashing down uh, from a squall line that came through. This is recorded off the personal weather station. So uh, certainly it's been very active in the weather department over the, the last several days. And unfortunately, it's going to continue to remain active. The threat for severe storms continues next week with a day five, day six, and day seven severe weather potential. Uh, this could be part of a multi-day severe weather outbreak across portions of the plains. And uh, this could inevitably uh, be a pretty significant risk, uh, but we'll have to watch that. It is still a little bit too far out at this given time. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys some more later.